Hello and welcome to our overview of Trackit Business Rules. Today we're going to do an overview of the canned rules that are available, how to copy rules and customize them, and how to set up your own rules from scratch. If you're familiar with the way rules worked in the older versions of Trackit and Trackit 11.x and prior, we had many areas where you can configure these types of rules. We had the email monitor settings, we had work order policies, we had skill routing policies. All of those things go away now and they are replaced with this one single business rules engine. So if you want to do things like change one field based on the value of another or send out a specific notification to a specific type of user based on a specific action, if you want to automatically generate help desk tickets based on emails, if you want to automatically notify technicians when certain things happen in the help desk, all of those sorts of things now can be handled by the business rules engine. As you can see, we're already in the configuration module here for Trackit. If you don't remember where configuration is, it's very simple to find. Click on the menu on the top left go down and select configuration. When you first enter configuration, you'll be in this application settings section, and we are looking for business rules. So you can either select all and scroll through all the settings here and find business rules that way, or you can simply select this little helper shortcut we have where we filter the settings down to things that are SLA and business rule related, and you'll see the business rules option right here at the top. A couple of things before we jump into the business rules to also notice here are the business rule event viewer and the job monitor settings. So the job monitor is what actually processes all the business rules and all the service level agreements and handles all of the actions that occur with those. If you open up the job monitor settings, you'll see there's a stop option to stop this service. You'll also see that there are polling interval settings and how many jobs to process per batch and things like that. These are all set up with a default configuration that should work for the majority of Trackit customers. If you want to play with these things, I would suggest talking with someone tech support or just not touching these unless there is some issue with your SLA and business rule processing where tech support advises you to change these because this should work for 99% of Trackit users. So I'm going to go back. The business rule event viewer is also interesting to note here because it will show you all the business rules as they're processing. It'll show you the name of the rule, the type of record it's acting on, and a bunch of other information about that rule as it runs. So this is helpful to see if your business rules are firing as they should be. It also will assist tech support if they're trying to help you out with a problem with one of your business rules. We're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and click business rules. If this is the first time you've ever been in the business rules area of the product. You will notice there are several canned business rules in here and they're all marked inactive. The reason we have so many here is we tried to provide examples of every type of scenario or situation that a customer may need but we realize that not everyone is going to use all of these rules either. So we've marked them all inactive by default. You can look through these and turn a few on to enable the basic functionality that most customers would use. You can also copy these and modify them to customize them for your environment. So one thing you're going to notice when you first come in here is there's a record type that shows whether it's an email or a ticket or an assignment rule, what type of action it occurs under, whether it's a create or update, and then whether it's a system or not or inactive. The majority of users are probably going to want to come in here and enable this rule right here, create new ticket via email with any subject. This particular one will monitor the track it email box and create help desk tickets for any emails that come into that box. So to edit a rule, you can select it and then click the pencil edit icon here on the toolbar or you can just double click on the rule. You'll see there's a business rule name, a description of what the rule does, and then you'll see there are conditions that must be met for the rule to fire. There are actions that will occur if all the conditions are met. And there's a schedule to tell the rule to perform the action immediately or at some point in the future. So for this particular rule, we are saying when a new email is received with these parameters, we want to create a record. That record we're going to create is a ticket. If I click the Select Edit Fields button, we'll see I'm going to take these values from an email, the subject, the message, and the address, and I'm going to put those in the ticket summary, the additional info, and the requester email address field. Then I'm also going to add a ticket note with this second run here, update record. And here I'm going to find the ticket, add a note, I'm going to plug in the activity code, additional info, and then I'm going to add a note, and the note is going to contain the email message. Lastly, I'm going to send a notification with the details of the ticket back to the original requester 
and that is going to contain this information here. We have some HTML formatting in here to make this email look nice, and you can customize all of this. Notice that you can select fields from the ticket and insert them either in the subject of the email or in the body. And then when you save this, this is the canned email that will go back to a requester anytime they email the help desk to create a ticket. So I'm going to cancel out of here. I'm going to go back to the conditions. You might be asking why there are so many conditions for this particular rule. The reason is because we have other rules that we've created where you can email track it and put the words open ticket in the subject and that will produce a ticket. You can put close ticket in the subject along with the ticket number and that will close the ticket. You can put ticket status in the subject along with the ticket number and that will send you back the status of the ticket. You can use update ticket along with the work order number to add updates to an existing ticket. And there are also a few other reasons in here you would want to ignore an inbound email, whether it has a reference to another ticket or whether it's a response back or if it's a returned mail because it was undeliverable. So most of these are in here as examples. These may or may not be applicable or useful to all customers, but we put these in here to show you common rule conditions that you may want to add. Most users won't use all of these types of email functions that we have as examples here. So typically what most people are probably going to do here is you're going to cancel out, you're going to select this create new ticket via email, you're going to select the drop down arrow here, copy business rule, you're going to create a name for that, you're going to save it, then we're going to open up that one that we just created, and then we're going to remove the functions that we really don't need that aren't applicable to our environment. So then we're going to turn this to active and we're going to save it. So now if my email server is configured properly, Trackit will start generating tickets from any emails based on these conditions from this business rule here. Okay, so in addition to this one now, I'm probably going to want to activate this rule here as well, close ticket via email. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to go up to the list here and say activate selected rule. And now that rule is active. It's still a system rule, so I still can't change it and save changes to it, but I can activate it or deactivate it from the menu there. So now this close ticket via email, what this rule is going to do is it's going to receive a new email. It's going to look in the subject for the words close the ticket. And then within there, if I open up the actions, it's going to update the record and it's going to update the values. So what it's going to do is it's going to extract from the subject here. It's going to look for double quotes in the new email subject and it's going to grab that and that's the ticket ID. So it's going to find the work order ticket based on that value. It's going to change the status to closed and then it's going to use that requester email address to send back an email back to that requester letting them know that that ticket has been closed. So I'm going to close this. You may also want to enable this close assignment via email as well because that will do the same thing as closing a ticket via email. You can close an assignment via email. And then you may also want to do this one as well, get ticket information via email. So if we open up this one, you will see that this one is looking for an email with the phrase ticket status followed by quotes and the ticket ID. And if it gets that, it is going to send back a notification with the details from the ticket and it's going to have this information in there. And of course, you can add more information to this as well. Again, if you want to add more things to this template, you can't modify the system one, but you can cancel a lot of this. You can select this. You can click on the action menu here and select copy business rule, and that will allow you to make a copy, and then you can make changes in the copy. And so that was an overview of creating and modifying business rules in Trackit. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner inside Trackit. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.